This is Dr. Mike Zappa, and with me is Carolyn Nigren, Director of Infection Prevention at Cape Fear Valley Health. We're here to talk some more about the coronavirus. So let's start with what is this coronavirus, Carolyn? So COVID-19, or SARS-CoV-2 as we're calling it now, is a newly emerged coronavirus, part of a much larger family of coronaviruses that have been around for a long time. Some of these coronaviruses uh, occur seasonally and cause the common cold, um, and some of the other uh, strains that you may have heard of that cause um, that were newly uh, emergent were SARS in 2002, 2003, and MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, a few years ago. So if you were to get this COVID-19, what kind of symptoms would you get? The most common symptoms that we are seeing are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. The vast majority of people that become ill with this virus um, develop very mild to moderate symptoms. However, it does carry with it the possibility of more severe disease in those that are um, advanced age um, and those who have comorbidities and immunocompromised uh, states. So, if I recall, it's not so big a deal to catch it, is it? I mean, so if I were to get it or you were to get it, uh, we'd be okay, wouldn't we? Yes, most people that catch this virus um, have mild to moderate disease, um, just like the common cold, and would need to stay home, drink fluids, and get plenty of rest. So Dr. Zappa, how do you catch the coronavirus? Well, you have to be in close contact with someone. So by close contact, it's like we would be considered pretty close contact right now because we're less than six feet apart. And if you were coughing or sneezing, some of those droplets that have the virus in it could come over to me. And if they get into my nose, mouth, if they're on my hands and I touch my face, that's how I could uh, contract it. In theory, if you were to leave droplets on a table and we don't wipe that off, and I were to touch it with my hand and then bring that up to my face, potentially could also catch it that way. Okay. So what are the things that we want everyone to do to help decrease the spread of this? So the number one thing you would want to do to decrease spread of any respiratory virus is wash your hands. Um, another thing that we um, really strongly recommend is staying away from public gatherings. Large gatherings are great breeding grounds for viruses like this, and in this time, it's a good idea to just stay home, um, you know, make sure you're washing your hands, wiping down surfaces like you mentioned uh, before, um, and only going to the doctor if you feel like you need medical attention, not for, you know, being afraid of maybe being exposed to coronavirus. So, Carolyn, you touched on something that's very important, and that's one of the things that's changed and we've seen a lot in the news uh, over this past week, and that's, you know, cancellation of big events. So that is very important because that's going to help decrease the spread. And as a health system, we're doing some of those things also. It's uh, we're restricting our visitors. Mm -hmm. So throughout the system, we're trying to restrict visitors to one only with each patient. Uh, and, and in high risk areas, like at Highsmith Rainey, where we have our long-term acute care patients, some of our sickest patients, we're actually eliminating visitors altogether. And the science behind that is we're trying to keep our most vulnerable patients safe. You know, when you look at the statistics, less than 1% of patients with COVID-19 are going to die from it. You know, the flu, it's less than a half a percent. So that means 99% of the people are going to do fine. But the people that are at risk are our elderly or those with severe illness. You know, right now in the country, there's just over 1,600 confirmed cases, and we have 17 in North Carolina. So far, uh, no confirmed cases in Cumberland County, but it is only a matter of time. Uh, but no worries. It is, for most of us, it will be nothing more than a common cold or a respiratory infection that will put us in bed for a few days. So as we see this epidemic growing, you know, we get lots of questions about 
how do I know if I have it? So, Carolyn, is there a good test? So, it's very important to know that there's no rapid or point of care testing like we have for influenza. Right now, really the, the majority of tests are being run at the North Carolina Department of Public Health State Lab or the CDC. Um, if you have exposure to a patient with COVID-19 or a, a person with COVID-19, a confirmed case, and you have symptoms, it would be a good idea to call your doctor ahead and go in and you would probably be approved for testing. Um, if you've also been experiencing symptoms like we talked about before, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and you've traveled to one of the regions where community spread is ongoing, um, which is not North Carolina at this point, um, those three areas in the United States are California, certain counties in California, um, Washington State, Central and Western Washington State, and New York State. So one of the things as a hospital that we've done to try to help our community is we have our care link line. Uh, the number is 615-LINK or 615-5465. Everyone is welcome to call that line. If you have questions about coronavirus or you're feeling sick and you're wondering what you should do. So if you have upper respiratory symptoms or you have cough or shortness of breath, you call the line, they're going to take you through a series of questions and evaluate not only your symptoms but your potential exposure by travel or contact with any confirmed cases. And they're going to help guide you through where's the best way for you to get care. If your symptoms are just mild, so you have congestion, cough, sore throat, they're going to advise you to stay home and contact the health department. And the health department will ultimately determine whether you need any testing. If your symptoms are moderate, kind of like the flu, you feel you have a lot of body aches, you have this annoying cough, maybe a headache along with fever, then we recommend that you go to an urgent care. For example, our Highsmith Express Care is equipped to evaluate you for these type of complaints. Doesn't mean that you necessarily have COVID-19, but you may have the regular flu, you may have a sinus infection, and they can take good care of you there. If your symptoms are severe, if you're having trouble breathing with this fever and cough, then our CareLink line is going to advise that you come to the emergency department and they will let us know ahead of time so we're prepared and ready to take care of you. So in summary, Carolyn, what's the most important thing that we think the public needs to know right now? Well, the first thing I would say is don't panic. This is a coronavirus just like a lot of other coronaviruses we've seen that causes mild to moderate symptoms, but most people are going to have the sniffles and the common cold from this. Um, wash your hands often, just like we say during flu season. Um, washing your hands is the number one way to prevent the spread of illness. Um, and really know that wearing a mask is not recommended for anyone other than healthcare workers or those caring for confirmed cases of COVID-19. It doesn't provide any additional protection uh, from the virus and keeping that six foot distance between other people and, and staying away from large crowds uh, during this time is the best way to keep yourself and your family safe. That's terrific advice. A final point is remember that 99% of us, if we get infected, we're going to be just fine. The reason to follow all these hand hygiene, keep your distance, and stay out of the big crowds is because we're trying to protect that vulnerable 1% of our population. We're trying to protect the elderly and those who are immune compromised. So that's the whole reason why we have visitor restrictions now at the hospital. You'll find that we've put in extra screening steps. You will be screened before you even enter the emergency department. This is all to decrease the incidence and the spread of this virus and keep everyone safe. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to CareLink and our number is 615-LINK. That's 615-5465.